okay, here's a good one. If there's one star player on a roster that doesn't get re-signed, who do you think it might be from Jonathan Proboost? That is a tough because I love them all, you know. It's a good it's a good um, question though. I'm gonna tell you why I'll tell you who yeah. I think it is. I'll tell you who Yeah, I think you go. I think it's Deion Dawkins. Um, and I don't know if we're considering him a star player, but he is the starting left tackle. And I love Deion Dawkins, but something tells me that we're going to replace him with someone either through the draft or for, in free agency. And I, I hate to say that because you think about the other two, other two or three guys we need to sign, and it's Tremaine Edmonds, it's Trey White, it's Josh Allen, right? Like when their contracts are up. The other only other guy I can maybe consider here is Matt Milano, but mm-hmm. um, I don't think Edmonds is going. I don't think Edmonds is getting out that door. I don't think White's getting out that door. Allen's certainly not as far as the trajectory he's on. So that kind of leaves, you know, maybe it's a Matt Milano or a Deion Dawkins that maybe doesn't get re-signed. Um, you know, D- Dota Tough says I'm, I'm guessing Milano. Chris says let's snow. Jonathan agrees. He thinks it's Deion. Here's my thing with Deion Dawkins is Deion Dawkins is very much, he was part of Sean McDermott's inaugural draft class. Yep. He sort of is a very processy guy, a guy who's improved every single year, guy who's got great work habits, um, you know, a guy who's really improved his game and bought into the culture. He's a locker room guy. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it so tough to move on from him. Tough, but yeah. at the same time, the, the only other person I can think of is Matt Milano. Yep. And you know what's more important than a, a great locker room guy and a left tackle is to Sean McDermott is linebackers who can go sideline to sideline and do a lot of things. And Matt, I think Matt Milano is so key, is so key to what Sean McDermott ha, what Sean McDermott has to do. So I honestly think if Sean McDermott and 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 uh, and, and Brandon Bean had to choose between the two. I think they're going Dawkins. I, I, I'm maybe there's a way, maybe there's a way they can get them both. Um, you know, John Holbert says Matt Matt Milano is a draft steal um, who is not easy to find again. There's a lot of guys every year with his skill set. I'm a big fan of weak side linebackers, Matt Milano type of linebackers, those linebackers that weigh in at 225 pounds. Maybe it all depends on how Voshan Joseph delivers this year in training camp right. and what yeah. he shows on the football field, but. Um, well, the reality is, is that at this stage in the game, you have to pay Deion Dawkins probably top 10 left mm-hmm. tackle money if you want to re-sign him. Even if you don't think he's a top 10 left tackle mm-hmm. in the NFL, that's just the way things work in the NFL. You're going to have to give him something along the lines of like a Jake Matthews contract where he's going to get $75 million, right? And he's going to get $35 mm-hmm. million guaranteed, whatever it ends up being. Like That's the type of contract you're looking at, I think, to sign Deion Dawkins long-term as as – you know, that's just the price you have to pay for a premier position like left tackle, I think, even if you're not a top five. Yeah, and it's uh, – if you think about it too, Josh Allen is your quarterback, and Josh Allen is a quarterback that is known for buying time with his feet. So I think that's sort of, you know, the Bills' philosophy in drafting Cody Ford, who's got, sort of got that uh, uh, – who's got that sort of guard tackle flex. Thank you so much, Um you know, you're going to need to, you know, put the grammar in there for me. I'm going to go with Dota Tough. Dota Tough. You think that's Dota Tough, Dave? Dota Tough. Yeah, that seems. All or right. do Dota Tough. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you're going to have to enunciate that in, a, in the comment section for us so we don't get it wrong. But uh, if you think about it, the Bills' philosophy at right tackle with uh, with Co- Cody Ford is that uh, – is that Josh Allen is the kind of quarterback who can buy him time. So they want those bigger, bulkier offensive linemen, guys who can push guys around in the run game because they know in the pass game Josh Allen can buy himself some time. So if Josh Allen can buy himself some time and Sean McDermott's thinking to himself that linebacker is super important to his defense, maybe they let the left tackle walk too. But doesn't that sound so like wrong? Doesn't it feel wrong to say that like a, a weak side linebacker is more important than a left tackle? I don't know. It yeah, feels it, it does. But like Sean McDermott, I think most of his scheme is reliant on like our defense is funneled through. I love Trey White, but our defense is, is funneled through four guys. And it's the middle of that defense. Edmonds, Milano, um, Hyde and Poyer. Those are the, the engines that run our offense or our defense. Those are the guys who make it work. Those are the guys who are just every play, know exactly where to be, what play to make. They can go sideline to sideline. They can make plays anywhere on the field. Um, so, 
Well, let's hope we well let's hope we just re-sign all of them because yeah. I, I, <laughs> I mean I mean I, I don't I don't think we're giving I don't think we're giving Dawkins enough credit for like the play the his play last year a little bit because I mean he like the fact is we didn't hear about him which I think was a good thing right he yeah. wasn't getting blown by he wasn't like giving up huge sacks so and like you said he's great in the locker room so I do like Dawkins it's just it's hard for me I don't know it's hard for me to see to project right now which one of these guys they won't pay, won't pay. but Voshan Roshan's development could play a factor in that very and well. and th- this is and, and thank you Jonathan for for the kind words and thank you for the question because this is some of my favorite um this is some of my favorite uh, stuff to talk about because t- roster building just fascinates me because the Buffalo Bills are going to get to a point in the next three, four years. Deion Dawkins, Matt Milano, Trey White, Tremaine Edmonds, Josh Allen, uh, you name it, Devin Singletary. Ed, Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver. They're going to get to this point in the next you know, four or five years where so many – you're going to start picking and choosing. You know, it's going to start being Sophie's choice. And you're going to have to start, instead of trading up and getting aggressive in the draft, you're going to have to start trading down and accumulating draft picks. And you're going to have to start filling your 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 like our, our roster is stacked right now. And we're able to stack the roster because we don't have to pay all of these guys. We don't have to pay the franchise quarterback. We don't have to pay, you know, the, the franchise middle linebacker right now. We don't have to pay these guys. We don't have to pay them. They're on rookie deals. Um, once you have to pay them, you know, you're not going to be able to have the depth we have in the secondary. You're not going to be able to have uh, the number of wide receivers that we have. You're not, you're going to have to draft them. You're yep. going to have to find guys off the street. Not, not just the, not just the dust settlers that Doug Wheeler likes to talk about, but the mm-hmm. dust settlers, dust settlers. You're going to have to fill the back half of your roster with guys people never heard of or, or guys that real draft Knicks have heard of. So it's, it's going to get to that point in the next four or five years. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Well, it's like the side to build this franchise around and whether that's the right decision or not. It, it and it kind of think of it as a scale, right? It's like as Josh Allen's ascending and we hope he continues to ascend, you try to, you try to do as much around him as you can while he's still developing mm-hmm. well, while he's still on that rookie deal. And then you hope that at the time that his rookie deal comes up, you are at the point where Josh Allen has like quote arrived and he is the guy that's carrying your team and covering up for maybe some of those roster deficiencies that we don't have now. Right. So you're kind of, the scale is kind of rotating that direction. Hopefully you get to that point. And we saw it happen with Seattle did it with Russell Wilson as he was on his rookie contract and he got the big money and now he's carrying that team. We've seen it with other teams as well. Right. So um, that uh, that's the scale and we'll see how it ends up playing out. But fascinating yeah because I, I mean uh, jonathan again he says can we financially resign all them like i i don't want to say no because he i mean my comment before this whole covid thing would would have been well the salary cap goes up every year like maybe we should stop worrying about contracts as much as you do i worry about contracts all the time but uh with this whole covid thing if there are no fans in the stands next year if they play football but with no fans next year they're losing 5.5 billion dollars $5.5 billion the National Football League is losing. That's that's going to affect the salary cap. That's going to do things um, that, that's going to affect the, the, you know, the way the NFL functions. 